mighty lady it's not a setback hallelujah welcome to everybody from all countries and wherever you're tuning in from all the provinces of south africa every continent that is represented this morning today i want to announce that the spirit of the lord is saying that you should know that whatever it is that you have been going through it is not a setback, but it is a setup. Hallelujah. It is a setup for your comeback. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I begin the journey this morning from 2 Kings chapter 5. The book of 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1. Hallelujah. As people are coming in, we will continue to issue the declaration that this is definitely not a setback, but it is a setup. What the enemy means to set you back and take you back on, what the enemy has meant to thought thinking that it will bring you down but he's actually giving you a step up a step up to a shift up hallelujah your set up is going to be turned around into a shift up hallelujah somebody so make sure that you are engaging in the comment section come on somebody it is not a setup it is a uh, it's not a setback rather but it is a setup hallelujah god bless everybody so second kings chapter 5 verse 1 says now naaman the captain of the host of the kings of syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper somebody say but he was a leper remember what i told you about the word but but he was a leper come on somebody hallelujah so naaman by all intents and purposes he was set up for greatness by all intents and purposes when you looked at him you would say naaman is a good person naaman is going places naaman's destiny is concluded is finalized everything looks good hallelujah people have looked at you and are thinking everything is going well they are seeing you drive your car but they don't know that you're actually driving on empty. Come on, somebody. Is there somebody whose car is on reserve this morning? Jesus, my God. Is there somebody who woke up this morning and says, I wish I had an English breakfast that I ate, but I had to settle for a, bo a, a bowl of porridge? Come on, somebody. Somebody, if you are that person, I want you to shout it out loud in the comment section and say, it is not a setback. Come on, somebody. Somebody was used to going into a Woolworth. Somebody was used to going into Macy's. You were used to buying things uh, that you could afford at any time but you have had to restructure your life you have had to get to a point that you have to buy now at the ordinary uh you know a uh, second hand market or something like that and life has just been turned around you've had to downgrade perhaps yes but you are suffering from something perhaps and people cannot see it hallelujah people see you walking in the street and they're thinking you've got it all together and you are all that and a bag of chips and everything everything people are looking at you and thinking that you eat sliced bread every single day but they don't understand what you have been going through and you are saying god i started so well God, at a point, I was able to provide for my family. We were even able to even buy takeaways. Am I communicating? Am I hitting a nerve yet? Am I talking to somebody? Come on, somebody. Mapua says that is true. It is not a setback. Can you please just confess with me and say it's not a setback? I was used to be eating chickens from Woolworths Pasta, but now I have to go queue at ShopRite. Talk to me, somebody. I don't know which one is ShopRite for you in your country. Hallelujah. Maybe your ShopRite is now your Costco you were used to be uh, buying at another location but there is a point in a season and in the life of a person where you feel like you have been going through a setback come on somebody but God has sent me this morning to tell you that it is not a setback but it is a setup it is a step up it is a setup it is a shift up talk to me somebody because sometimes when we go through life our friends and those who are close to us they can make us feel like we've reached the end of the line that things are not gonna get back on track again Again, but God is going to do exceedingly more abundantly above all that you could think or perceive. Hallelujah. You have not seen what God is about to do in your life because God is about to turn around your setback into a setup. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody say it is not a setback. Te confess with me. It is not a setback. Hallelujah. You were used to flying business class. You were used to flying first class, but now you find yourself in economy class. My God. Somebody says... I was used to fly to different destinations, but pastor, now I have to use the bus. I have had to humble myself. Somebody say it is not a setback. 
thank you, Jesus. It is not a setback, Noashe. It is not a setback, Brenda. Who are my people on YouTube? Let me encourage you this morning and tell you it is not a setback setback, but it is a setup. We look at a man who is Naaman, a general in the army. He is a great man who is leading other people in the army who do not have the disease that he has. He is a man with leprosy, but people don't know that he has leprosy because he's covered up. People don't know that he has leprosy because of how he's clothed. You cannot see his skin, but he's saying, I'm going to lead. I'm going to still be a leader. I'm still going to lead this army, even though there are issues inside my skin, even though there are issues in my house. Come on, somebody. Somebody walks in into your workplace this morning. You don't know that they've been arguing with their spouse the whole night. You are the name and that I'm talking about this morning who is going in and you still have to lead that team with every confidence. You have to look at them and smile at them. You are expected not to snap at anybody. Come on, somebody. Is there somebody who's looking to God for mercy this morning? Who's looking to God for an intervention and say, Pastor Fortune, sometimes it's so overwhelming and somebody is going to trigger you this morning at work and I want to tell you to just breathe. Just take three breaths and say it is not a setback. This is a setup. This is a setup. I know how I'm going to respond. My God. It is not a setback, but the setup with the help of the Holy Spirit. You're going to keep your cool. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to engage on that road rage. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you're, gonna, you're not going to snap because when you're opening all these envelopes that are telling you you are owing you knew this this is going to be taken away you're not gonna set uh, snap at your children you're not gonna snap at your spouse are we communicating together this morning hallelujah somebody i know the holy spirit is already doing some things uh, in in the spirit realm right now it is a set up for a comeback hallelujah i'm being set up for a comeback this setback is for a coming back somebody shout in the comment section and say i'm coming back Somebody shout in the comment section and say, I'm coming back. Hallelujah. This was a great man. The, the Bible says that he was a, a captain. He was a whole captain in the host of the king of Syria. He was an important man that had to take decisions, that had to sit and dine with presidents, prime ministers, kings, and make a decision whether or not the army was going to go to war, whether or not the army was going to defend its country, so forth. Hallelujah. He was a mighty man of valor. Come on, somebody. Somebody knows that I have been a breadwinner. There was a point that I was respected. There was a point that my wife knew to how to respect me because I was a breadwinner. I was bringing the bacon. In fact, the whole pig home, if we were to use that loose language, I was somebody. I was respected. Now, they don't even look at me anyhow. You were the person that was helping your siblings. You were helping your family members. But now they treat you like you are a persona non grata. They are treating you like you are a hobo. Oh my Jesus. Karabashoto kodiaha. My God, my God. Oh, somebody say this is not a setback. This is a setup in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are not being set back, but you are being set up. You are actually being propelled forward. Talk to me, somebody. He says it was a, he was a mighty man of valor. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing some mighty men of valor. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing some mighty women of valor. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It is not a setup, but it is a setup. Come on, somebody. Bonke, who can identify the situation with me? Who can identify all this? At a point, they said you were the most beautiful woman all on earth. At a point. He could not stop giving you compliments, but now he's treating you like you are a repellent, like you are you are a fumigation, uh, um, a spray of some sort, a fumigating cockroaches. Talk to me, somebody. They don't see your value. They don't see your beauty anymore because an enemy has put his hand in it. Come on, somebody. Somebody is coming back from that setback. You are coming back, back into your relationships. Some of you are coming back into your marriages. You're going to come back shining. You're going to come back glowing. You're going to come in smelling like... The, the most expensive perfume. And, 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 and some of you who have been rejected and you have been dumped, you're going to walk down the, 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 the road and you're going to encounter the person that 
rejected you come on somebody the person that rejected you and they will be actually the be the ones who are looking like a hobo and they'll be saying but i thought that he was she was gonna go down i thought he was gonna go down and become a nobody you said no 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 baby it was not a setback it was a comeback you actually had to remind me who i am you actually reminded me that i was somebody you reminded me that i am carrying something you reminded me that i've got potentials that i've not tapped into you reminded me of who i am in christ you reminded me that i'm actually skilled you reminded me that i can actually go back to school and do something of my life you reminded me of the dreams that i had cut down because i was trying to follow you and i was trying to help you pursue your dreams you reminded me that i started being a wife too early before you even married me and i put in my time and investment in nurturing you and trying to be a help me to you and i helped you get to the status that you got into it was because i was trying to help you but you took that and threw it on my face come on somebody i'm liberating somebody somebody this morning right now come on somebody somebody say i'm coming back i'm coming back this is not a setback they don't understand that the more this is what i this is a testimony in my personal life every time i would have a friends that would try to set me up for my fall down in fact i would go back and i would do even more better than what i was going to do thank you god for sending me friends that were evil so that they could remind me of the purpose that my my parents sent me to school for they said I, I was reminded every time that I was sent to school to make a difference for my life and the lives of my siblings come on somebody that propelled me to study even more and make myself better and to become a better person you need to understand how you need to turn around the situation that the devil deals you if he gives you lemons you make lemonade out of it talk to me somebody I know you meant it for good I know you paid their school fees I know you thought they were going to accept your lobola or your dowry at the end of the day but they treated you like trash and they forgot that you actually paid their school fees of their daughter but now they are treating you like you are a nobody because you put your life on pause to make somebody better come on somebody somebody say this is not a setback it is a setup and i'm shifting up and this is my comeback talk to me somebody Oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. You need to understand that it is possible to have outstanding results in spite of life setbacks because some of you, you are having outstanding results in your workplaces. You are having outstanding results, but people don't know that there is something that is eating you up inside. You are putting up your smile. Meanwhile, you are thinking about the rape that has been caused to you, the rape that has de 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 debilitated, I don't know if it's the right English word, but that, that rape that made you so traumatized that you cannot even function when your husband is trying to make love to you you are traumatized because everything is triggering the moment when the rape occurred talk to me somebody every time somebody is trying to get close to you my god you cannot function hallelujah and you're trying to explain, God bless you, Anna. You're trying to explain that I'm okay. I'm trying to be okay. I'm trying to be okay. But I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this because I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of my body. I'm ashamed because my virginity was broken. And it was broken when I, I didn't even understand what virginity is all about, what sex was all about. And my, 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 my purity and my innocence was taken away as a child. And that is why I cannot trust another man. I was set back years, a few years but I believe that God is repairing certain things this morning. God is repairing some people this morning. God is restoring some people this morning. God is saying that it is time for your set up and your shift up. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody say, I'm shifting up. I am shifting up. This is my comeback in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Jesus, it is possible. It is possible because you are functioning as the best manager at work. You are functioning as the best manager, as supervisor at work. And it looks like you've got it all together because you can run this ship. You can run somebody else's business. Meanwhile, there's hellfire brewing at home. You know that everything is scattered. You have to keep your composure. Meanwhile, your children are busy smoking nyaupe. They are smoking tick. They are smoking cocaine they are smoking every single thing my god somebody needs to cry out and say god set me up shift me up take me out of this setback my god i know i am doing the best i can with what i can i'm just a parent who's just trying to make it it is not a setback it is a setup come on somebody you understand from the anchor scripture that i just read the story of naaman who was a captain of the syrian army a captain was a person that there is no decision that is taken without the army the army 
cannot move forward. The army cannot go to the battle without the, the captain agreeing to it. Talk to me, somebody. They needed to consult with Naaman. Hallelujah. There is no decision that could be taken without consulting him. But he had a setback. He was a leper. That is why the, the Bible says, yes, you had all these things, but he was a leper. Ah, Shakuriya Mahasata. He might look all that, but he's from the village. But he's from a poor family. It don't matter where you come from. There's an interruption where you understand that that setback is supposed to actually push you forward. Some people don't understand what to do with the circumstances that make it look like they are at a disadvantage. It is exactly because you are at a disadvantage that you have to put in the extra work. It is because you are at a disadvantage that you are supposed to do more and even move further. Come on, somebody. The fact that, let me talk to you South Africans, the fact that we've got legislation that keeps on telling us that you are coming from a, 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 a disadvantaged background and we're thinking that it will always qualify us for open doors, you need to understand how many people are also from a disadvantaged background that are battling for the same position. You're going to have to set yourself apart from that same position. Let me, let me digress a bit and talk to everybody who has been saying, Pastor, I need a job. My question is, what are you putting in in your CV? What are you putting in in that job cover letter? In fact, so that when, when I understand that you're saying, I have not been able to be called, how, what have you done to set yourself apart? Aside from the fact that you have been praying, aside from the fact that you have been reading the word, aside from the fact that you have been saying, I'm a child of God, what else have you done to set yourself apart? We need to understand that this fight, we're going to have to do far much more. My God. Oh, this is hot now. Hallelujah. I hope my t-shirt is written the right thing. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We need to understand that we need to shift. We need to set ourselves up for something bigger. We need to set ourselves up to become different. To understand. Do you understand how many BCom students are competing for the same job? For that same job that you have applied for. Whole countrywide. Maybe it is even continent-wide. Jesus. You're going to have to set yourself apart. I am trying to dare you to say, you're going to have to do something extraordinary to set yourself apart, even amongst other Christians. You're going to understand that life is a battlefield. It's not a fun fair. You're going to have to fight your way through. You are not fighting non-Christians, but you're also fighting with other Christians because you're all competing for the same crown. So what's going to set you apart? It's not going to be just by confession and prayer alone. Talk to me, somebody. Let me help deliver somebody very quick. You're going to have to go the extra mile. You're going to have to understand that even when you feel sleepy, you have to go up. You have to go on. You have to burn the candlelight. You have to go an extra mile. You're going to have to study extra. No matter how you feel sleepy. Yesterday, I felt so sleepy. I remember I was writing an exam. In between all the prayers that I was doing, I was falling asleep on this very same table. And five minutes later, I would wake myself up and say, remember what, you, what, you, what your goal is. Remember that you still need to win that other one. It does not help to win in other areas and not pursue other areas. Do you understand that everything works together? Somebody say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So I'm, uh, what I'm saying is that your complaints about, oh, I'm exhausted, don't matter. You're going to have to forget about being tired. You're going to have to forget about eating three times a day. If you know that there are certain things and certain reversals that need to happen in terms of your nutrition, in terms of your health, you're going to have to fast. You're going to have to understand that you're going to have to cut off certain things for you to achieve the health levels that you need to achieve. You cannot go on behaving the same way that put you in the same hell hole. That you're, if you want to come out of that pit, of that, that hell hole, you're going to have to do something different. Tell, tap your neighbor and say, do something different. Jesus, makoraba shata kaliaba soto. When you know that you've had enough and you've had enough, you're going to have to do something extraordinary. The person who does the same thing again and again and again and in the name of consistency and you are not having any different result, that is what we call insanity. And I know that I'm not speaking to people who are insane this morning. I'm talking to people who are hungry for change. Talk to me, somebody. 
Hallelujah. When you look at the story of Naaman, you understand that this story proves to us that it is possible to have outstanding results in life, yet you are having setbacks. Yes, you are having challenges. Challenges are a part of life, but it does not mean that you have to struggle, and it does not mean that you have to struggle forever or have a challenge forever. Challenges are seasonal. Challenges have a start date and an end date. Hallelujah. You cannot be in a repetitive cycle of the challenge. If you are in a repetitive cycle of a challenge the whole time, the same challenge, year after year, the only thing that is not changing, it is you. And I'm here to dare you this morning and tell you that the Holy Spirit says, ask them fortune if they are willing to change, if they are willing to do something different, if they are willing to go where they've never gone before. Some of you will need to leave your cities. Some of you will need to leave your countries so that you can go and dare and say, I want to do something else different. You're not going to sit there and die. My God, my God. Thank you, Mara Official. You're on fire this morning. I can see. Do something different. Come on, tap on that screen and share that live broadcast. You need to know. You need to get even more Christians in here. My God. This is not a setback. This is a setup for a comeback. I'm being set up for a comeback. And God is giving us a chance this morning that we repent of our ways because we become too cozy. And we are saying, I am praying. I am doing this. I am confessing. What else are you doing? Are you working the work? Are you doing the work? Are you putting in the work? There's no way, children of God, you, you know, I, this might seem like a joke. In, in I think it was the, the third or the fourth church plant that when I planted my fourth church in my, in, in my there was, there was a time I remember that I burst out in the pulpit and I said, listen, some of these diabetic spirits that we're busy casting out, we need to understand that some of us have self-sabotaged ourselves because if you keep on eating incorrectly, what do you expect? And you need to understand to reverse that you're going to have to invest your time and self into a nutritional reversal where you're going to do the right things. It might not be sweet. It might not be cute. I love chocolates. But I know they are bad for me. Am I helping somebody this morning? Oh my God. Shakura Bahasataka. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm. People, you call for a fast. Everybody wants to do everything else, but you don't want to fast, but you want the spirit realm to, to work for you. Do you understand? It's not in you texting the prayer request it's in you actually doing the prayer it's in you actually starving yourself and say okay i'm gonna fast and i'm not gonna announce to the world i don't even have to wait for them to tell me to go on a fast but there is something there's so much knowledge that is out there and i'm daring christians and saying can we go out and get this information and make it work for us some people have had their health reversed just by fasting alone we are self-sabotaging ourselves. But if we stop eating, maybe for like a day or two, sometimes you go to hospital and they put you, they say, you are not, it's, 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 it's zero per mouth. You are not eating for the next three days. And suddenly you feel better. Do you understand that God, these principles that are laid out in the word of God, they are for a reason. They are for a reason, but we don't want to follow them. We want to stuff ourselves with carbohydrates that are so fatty and everything, and we expect things to be. And then now we suddenly say, oh my God. No, it's not a demon. It's self-sabotage. Some of the things are self-sabotage. That is why when I cancel people, I ask the question, they say, you said, where is the, the problem coming from? Your marriage did not get to where it, it, it got by one person doing wrong. There's two sides of the story. There's two sides of the coin the whole time. I'm that pastor who will want to know the other side of that coin. Because yes, there might be something that you did. There might be something that they did. Or there might be something you did not do because you did not observe the red flags before you entered into it. And deep down you know that you are in an ungodly foundation and God was never in the relationship in the first place. And suddenly you thought that magically you were going to turn the person out to become a, you are a panel beater. You thought that you were going to put them in this workshop and you're going to turn them. You, got, you, you, took, you took a Mazda and you thought you're going to make it a, a Land Rover. The devil is a liar. When you can see that there's red flags and God is showing you, this person is a narcissist 
watch it, watch it, don't go there, don't touch it. This person is abusive. Him beating you or her beating you is not good. Do not go there. No. We want to become panel beaters. We want to get into the workshop and do wonders. While God gives you a template and says, let him love you as Christ loved the church. My Jesus. Am I communicating this morning? Nobody's going to self-sabotage. But the whole point of my message is this. That the setbacks that would have brought Naaman down, they did not bring Naaman down. Naaman continued on the assignment. And I'm saying to some of you, I don't care whether you don't have the money. Continue until you can really say and say, God, you know what? Maybe I don't have the money anymore and I can't continue. I'm saying to the people that are called to be ministers in the word of God, those who know you have to serve God, stop complaining about there being no money. Yes, there is no money. We know that Christians sometimes don't give. And this thing is very difficult. It's for their detriment. But you do your part as best you can. And you make sure that you are there for your family because your family is your support system so that you don't burn out. Some of us have burned out before and we stepped away from ministry because we felt we had put our all. But you learn from correction and say, you know what? This is the limit. I'm not going to do one, two, three. I'm going to stop myself here. I'm talking to those ministers of the gospel. There, this, there's a lot of changes and shifts that are needing to happen in terms of mindsets. These things, these words that are saying that ministers have to be poor. And that is how God, you're not supposed to aspire for more. No, aspire for more. Aspire for more. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling and work out and be there for your family as well. Be there for your finances of your family as well. Do not be held back. My God, oh God, help me Jesus. Because if I say some of these things, although they are scriptural and they are biblical, Christians need to learn the word of God. They need to understand that there's a personal responsibility you take for certain things in your life and you're going to have to do them. You're going to have to understand that those things you don't have, you, you are not entitled for another human being to do and execute those things. There's also you who has to do those things. You have to work it. It's not your pastor that has to do everything for you. He also has his family to look after unless you're looking after the pastor. Jesus, take responsibility. I'm coming back. Somebody shouted again. I'm coming back. I want you guys to learn the right way of doing things, the principles of God. You understand that in taking responsibility, in doing what the Bible also expects of you, you understand that you don't have to get burnt out and your pastor doesn't have to get burnt out. You all do your part so that the Levites are provided for it also. It broke my heart. Yesterday, I spoke to another lady who was saying, I used to do this. I used to help people, but I don't have the time anymore because I don't, I, and I, who is at a disadvantage? He says, I, I, I can't, I have to, I have to now uh, look at other ways of, 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 I have to go in an income because it doesn't serve me to serve God. Go and preach God. Best of deep city, preach God, preach God and let him give you the provision. And when there's no provision, you don't, you don't have to say, you, you don't have to force yourself and break yourself and break your neck on it. It's the disadvantage of the people that you were called for that will not respond, but it's okay. God's got your back. God will bring the right ones in the right season. It's no, no worries. So we see Naaman, he's got leprosy, but he's covered up. He shows to us that it's possible. You can still lead. You can still perform, even though you're going through stuff. So stop making it a pity party like you have to lock yourself up in the house and say, things are not going well. You don't understand, Pastor Fortune. I don't have a lunchbox, so I can't even go to work. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. Why is it? I was discussing this with my husband the other day. I said, I don't understand. People who drink alcohol. They can, they can be jobless, but they can still manage to come back drunk at home. Why is that? Have you ever wondered? How come that... And, and he said, no, with, with men, they take tens. This man, this week, this one pays, this one pays. 
So if you do, if you can have the money to buy the alcohol, but you don't have the money to invest in your own business and to start yourself up, do you take time to understand why is it that my CV is not giving me the returns that I need? It's because your CV looks like everybody's CV. How can you make your CV look different? It's not in the flowers that you put in, but it's how you're going to learn how to articulate yourself. Do you know how many videos are online that teach you how to articulate yourself? How to speak about yourself? That you are going to get that captain's job. They don't know. It's not just your qualifications. My God, I think we need to speak about this. What is making you get stuck? Why are you stuck? What, why should they choose you when there's, there's 15,000 other people that have got the same qualifications and 3% of them, they've got those distinctions and they've graduated cum laude. What is so special about you? Do you understand that you, I want to remove the sense of entitlement where you are propelled, you know, something must burn inside of you before you leave this broadcast to say, let me go and actually ask myself. What's so different with, with my cover letter that when my application, what is going to, the person who's sitting and looking at those applications right now, no, 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 no. You, 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 there's one person. They've just received 2,000 applications. What's going to strike out from your document, aside from the fact that you are favored of God, and, and, and yes, now she decides that by the time she gets to 100, the, the, the 100th application, they are holding it, and they are, what's going to make them want to read it? Because now the anointing has spoken for you, you laid hands on it, and you prayed, and you said, God, let this CV go out, it's going out, I am sending it out, or I emailed it out, I, I prayed for it, I made declarations. What's going to make that person stop? And what are they going to read? That's going to set you apart. That's going to say, okay, I, this, this is worth looking a second round. This is worth shortlisting. Okay, I'm going to leave that for another session. Maybe we'll talk about it tonight at 7 p.m. It's Wednesday, right? Let's talk about what are the things that are shortcoming? What is it that we are not doing? Guys, what I'm saying, I'm daring you, I'm saying that being disadvantaged or coming from a disadvantaged background, coming from a leprous background does not mean that you don't know that you can't access the truth. The reason why we have these meetings is so that we can open our eyes and God can open our eyes and say, you must be wise as serpents. Do you understand why the Bible says you must be wise as serpents? People who are in the world, people that you're calling serpents, there's something that they're doing. And if it is the right thing that they're doing, we need to know what that is. We don't have to copy and mimic everything else that they're doing, but what it is, what is it that spoke for them and didn't speak for you and we're going to change that around hallelujah so at every point in your life you are either facing a challenge or the other but stop stop falling apart yes you may cry for a season and feel like it's too much but stop falling apart and you you, you you're not you're not snow you're not gonna melt you're strong you're actually built very strong you're going to face challenges throughout life, yes, but you've got that point of celebrating victory because he has already prophesied and pronounced the victory that is coming your way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And victory can never come unless you come with the challenge. There has to be a challenge for you to win something. There has to be a challenge for you to get to a victory point. Talk to me, somebody. So the excuse not to do something will always be available. People have the most best excuses. People, I, I learned in ministry that there will always be a good excuse why somebody did not show up on prayer on time. There's always a good excuse why you showed up late, why you didn't show up. There's always going to be an issue with the kids and everything. So my question would always be, what about the person who's leading prayer that day? Do you not think that they also value their time, that they also have a family? If all of us have to make sacrifices the way we do, or not make sacrifices, then nothing would ever get done. The same principle applies even in your workplace. If everybody had the same excuses, why you always say for coming late, who would ever get the company going? Why is it that we don't stretch ourselves to do something else different? 
Why don't we stretch ourselves to say, you know what, this is might not be my company, I might not be a shareholder, but I'm going to treat it as if it's my own company because I know I'm sowing a seed. Do you understand what qualifies you for a promotion? Some of you have been in the same job. Your, your promotion is not going to come because you have been there working for 10 years. Your promotion is going to come because you're going to set yourself apart. You're going to say, I'm going to show up like Naaman and I'm going to show up at every battlefield regardless of my leprosy. Everybody has got three kids. Somebody, there's more than enough people that have two kids. Other people have seven kids, but they still show up to work on time. Come on, Christians. They still show up to work on time. You chose to have seven children, so you must have a plan how you look after seven children. I know that this might be painful. If you don't want to say amen, you can say ouch. But let us put certain things in order. You understand that the decisions that you are making every single thing, every single day, they have repercussions. If you choose to have seven children and you are a single parent and you have no support structure, you need to understand that this thing is going to cause challenges. There is a cause and an effect. I know you don't like me, right? You don't like me this morning. The truth shall set us free. Somebody does not have their parents and they still, still chose that they're going to fight and they're going to live. They're going to make it and that their, their children, they're going to work with such speed and they're going to save. Somebody has decided that when I get that job, I'm going to have a savings account where I'm putting aside something for my children. But no, equally, there's somebody else who's saying, I'm going to eat life. I'm going to enjoy as if there's no tomorrow. And then tomorrow there's a crisis and suddenly you have no savings. There is no emergency fund. And, and, and saints, please believe me. What, what I'm saying, I'm saying by the leading of the Holy Spirit for a correction. This is the rod of correction that is probably coming through today to say we need to change the way we are doing things. The Giza has broken down. You don't even have 10% of whatever it is that would need to fix it. Because you chose to live a, a life so recklessly. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's not the devil that attacked your giza. Come on, somebody. Shakuria bahasata kalia. Do you have an emergency fund that can take care of things when things go wrong? Somebody is from a family where they are an orphan. But they chose to fight and said, I'm going to be different. I'm going to make sure my children experience something different. I know that my, my, I saw my parents struggle. Perhaps, uh, you know, that they couldn't cope with six children. Some, some, and then you have somebody who will go and say, I'm going to have a polygamous relationship. Not even, um, what do you call, not even uh, a polygamous marriage but they choose to have different girlfriends and you choose to spread these kids everywhere. You are sowing your seed. You have a child there. You have a child there. Meanwhile, you don't even have a job or you have a job. The job is not even enough to, 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 to maintain you or your, 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 your family, your, your, your parents. Now you are busy engaging in reckless behavior, engaging in reckless behavior that is sending the message to these children that we've got fathers who are just donors who don't look after our children their children you are busy contributing to a dysfunction that it's okay to have families that do not have fathers and mothers and i don't blame i was a single mother for a long time but i had to take responsibility and understand that if i put myself in that situation i had to take myself out of that situation it is not an excuse. There is not a special cloud that is coming to you because you are a Christian and, and you are busy messing around. If you know certain things are wrong, stop doing them. Stop shaking up. Stop giving this person children. They have been with you 10, 7 years and they have not done anything productive. What are you waiting for? There is no security. You don't need a prophet to tell you that. The thing ain't working. My God. Okay, let me try and be nice to you people. I know you don't want me to be. If you don't know how to start your business, there is Google. Ask me, I'll give you a link, although it might be legal, to tell you where you will find the books that you will read. 
but spend time reading and finding out. Ask me. I will tell you, come to the seven o'clock and you come up, you request to be in the box and say, where can I find information concerning this? They will, somebody will answer in this community, in this family. They know the answers. Thank you, Dr. Kathy. Somebody has the answer to the issue that you are dealing with. Money is not an excuse. No knowledge is not an excuse. There is knowledge that you will get. Instead of just being on TikTok and doing the dances, there is information even on this very TikTok. People who will sit and impart their intellectual property knowledge to help you. But no, you will scroll past that one. You just want to go do the dance challenge. No matter how many times, that is why people charge for information because they see when people get information for free, they don't want to execute it. You're not going to spend time executing it. You're not going to learn. That is why some of the things need to be charged so that you can actually invest time and do it. But let me be nice to you. Let me go back. The Bible says in, in Ecclesiastes, that says, he who observes the wind shall not sow and he who regards the clouds shall not reap. You're always waiting for the perfect time and the perfect season while you're going to do something. You, go, you said you're going to start next week, Monday. You didn't start. Last year, you said you didn't have the money to register. This year, you still don't have the money to register. What network did you create between last year and now? What friends did you create? You kept the same friends that did not help you. You needed just 5,000 rand. You needed 500 rand to register for just even one module. But you couldn't gather one module for the whole year. But you had money during December to go buy the new jean, to buy the new sneakers. You had money to do everything else. The devil is a liar. This error must be corrected. I have, to, this is a setback that is meant to set me up. God opened the doors for me. How does he open the door? You go and volunteer. You know, you identify the place. If it's better, even if it's a walking distance, you say, you don't have to pay me a salary. What I do need is an experience because I've got this qualification, but I don't have the experience. You might not have to pay me. I will see. I will try my best and make sure that anytime I've got taxi fare, I will make it to this company to come and volunteer. Very soon as you are giving yourself diligently, don't work as if, oh, they don't pay me enough. They might start giving you an allowance for transfer transport and before you know it somebody god opens the door somebody resigns somebody drops dead or do whatever and you are appointed to that that position this error must be corrected let's change our ways let's stop stop this sense of entitlement now i'm not gonna work for 200 rands for a day i want to earn 350 for a day at least you were offered 200 for a day there's somebody who's willing to kill for that 200 for a day Things are not working well for you. You don't have money to, but you are saying, I will never do domestic work. I will never clean somebody's house. I won't wash somebody's car. Come on, somebody. How bad do you want it? Don't be stuck in the leprosy. The leprosy is nothing. It's just a setback, but it's not as, you need to work within that leprostate, over that leprostate, you push through. Come on, somebody. You need to stop postponing and saying, I will start tomorrow. You observe the wind. You're waiting for the perfect conditions. You're waiting for the destiny helper, which you are not even praying for. You want others to pray for. You are rude to your destiny helpers, maybe. Not you guys. I'm talking about the other people that are not on this broadcast, of course. So never permit your any setback in your life to render you insignificant. I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm not insignificant and I'm not going to be insignificant. I will never be insignificant. I shall not be insignificant. I cannot be insignificant. I've run out of all the English uh, prepositions that I can use there. I'm not insignificant. I'm not going to be insignificant. I will fight. I will fight. It's not over until... I, it, in, in orchestra, they say, it's not over until the fat lady sings. It's not over for you yet. What do you have in your hands? What do you have in your house? What can you turn around that can make you that breakthrough? If a woman that is selling fat cakes at the corner at Denneboom Station is, is able to build a big house, there is something wrong with people who have got qualifications and they're telling me there is no job. It's a lie. It's a lie. 
I have met people who are delivering food on motorbikes that have got master's degrees that are still working it and say, I'm still looking for my job. But while I'm doing this, my family's not going to go hungry. Stop thinking you are too high. Stop exalting yourself so much that you are not humbling yourself and God has presented. There's opportunities everywhere. Come on, somebody. It might be tiring. It might look like you are beyond. And yes, it might be the devil's influence because some of you, the devil has exchanged your destinies. You are not supposed to be doing that kind of a job. Yes, it's true. But while you are fighting through the foundations that are fighting you, while you are fighting the altars that have minimized you and made you insignificant, while you are fighting the altars that are saying, yes, you studied to become a lawyer. Yes, you studied to become a teacher, but you are there selling fed cakes on the street. You At least you are doing something while you are praying. And you're saying, I'm going to fight through this. And God, I know this is not the position that you have called me for, but I'm going to fight. I'm going to make sure my children don't get hungry. I'm going to make sure that I've got money to register. I'm going to make sure that I register for the next module. I'm going to make sure that my enemies, whoever has sent that witchcraft arrow, is not going to rejoice by seeing me being nothing and nobody. I'm still going to survive and I'm going to show them that I'm going to show up for my God and I'm going to show up for prayer and I'm going to fight and until I uproot that evil charm that they planted in my house that, did, that, 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 that demolished everything that I was supposed to. Do you understand that while we are fighting to get your destiny back, we are also fighting financially? Money is a voice. And we will fight. We will fight. God, I need money. Yes, I need money. And God, I'm going to fight. And I'm going to do this. And I know God. I, I really know God. Do you understand for somebody who's got a master's degree, a master's in psychology, to be doing that kind of work, it doesn't take me five seconds to determine that there is witchcraft involved here. There's an evil hand at work. And the person is articulate and they make sense. It's not because they cannot get the job, but I understand that there's evil manipulation. And while we are busy seeking the Lord to intervene on that evil manipulation, but that person says, at least, pastor, I still got the guts to try and make it. I'm going to make it one way or the other. Oh, somebody say, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight and I'm going to make it. We are a generation of people that are irresistible. Understand that I'm irresistible. I'm a God's child. I belong to God. I'm irresistible. I don't, I don't, I don't fall under fatigue. I, if there is such an English word that says, I'm indefatigable. You are, you are not fatigable. I'm unfightable. The devil cannot stop me. I'm unfightable. The devil cannot stop me. The more they're thinking that their charms are working, that's when you are rejoicing even more. That's when you are even praising even more. You're saying, they must not understand. Confuse the enemy. You dance around the house. God bless you, Jenica. You dance around your house and your compound. The more they are thinking they got you, you are dancing around the house and say, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. They don't understand because they expected you to be crying. They didn't expect you to wake up fighting. And you're saying, Jesus is Lord. My God, I'm going to fight. Mm. I'm coming back. Somebody announced to your neighbor, I'm coming back. It's possible. You can have outstanding results in life. You can have outstanding results in life and still be operating under a setback. But you can be rest assured that God is setting you up. And in that setup, he's shifting you up. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to fight temptations. You're going to have to fight the trials with faith. You're going to have to fight. Your faith has to come through. The temptations will be there that you backslide. The temptations will be there that you go back. But you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight the trials that even when that man that you know that you shouldn't be fornicating with or you shouldn't be called committing adultery with, when the temptation comes, you say, no, my faith is too important for me. Where I'm going is too important for me. If you don't regard me as good enough as to marry, then please keep on moving. Keep on stepping. My children children have got enough confusion in their lives. They don't know whether you're not, are you the father or are you the uncle? I am so tired. I am so tired of introducing different men to my children and saying this is uncle so and so. Come on somebody. Can I talk to some single woman here? Listen, you need to stop introducing different men to your children and calling them uncle so and so. And meanwhile, you don't even know the insurance or you don't have the assurance how long they are staying around for. You need to make, tell them to bounce. Come on somebody. You need to make sure you protect your children from 
from all this madness that is happening around the world. That is how even sometimes there's creeping in of people who are sexually abusing children because there's always uncle so and so, uncle so and so. And sometimes it's okay to stay single for a while while you get yourself together, while you get your medulla bronchitis together to function well and understand what God is calling you to do. Talk to me, somebody. Let's stop confusing these children. What are you saying to your girl child? It's okay. You can, you can change men every three months or every six months. No, the devil is a liar. God bless those who are gifting. The devil is a liar. Don't introduce anybody until they are ready to do the right thing. Hide that, do that relationship there in the street. Go do your data gathering there, outside. Now tomorrow they don't, there was Uncle Soren, Uncle Soren, will you even teach the children to lie? What about the baby mamas who are busy saying, eh, you, when the father calls, tell them, you are teaching your children to even lie. Come on, guys, we are better than that. We can come back. I don't care whether you've done it three times, four times. There is always a comeback. That was just a setback. That was the devil just disrupting you. That was the devil that was just disrupting you from your destiny. Right now, now that you have heard the truth, can we fight back? Can we fight back for our societies? Can we fight back for our communities? Can we fight back for the pure church of Christ that is without blemish and spot, that are true worshippers who are truly living out a principle? Yesterday, I heard Papa Orisa Jafo saying that, you know, God respects a, a person who's living by principles. It's not the miraculous. The miraculous come from the principles. When you honor principles, that's when you follow the miraculous. Come on, somebody. Miracles will come when you honor principles. I wish you knew how much of this is a burden. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, may the Lord save us. May the Lord save us. There has to be a difference between us and, 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 and the world. There has to be a difference. Surely, Mom Kathy, there has to be a difference. There has to be a difference. We can't have one, one leg in and one leg out. And then we are, cons we are saying that God is not working in our lives. It's a lie. It, we can't. I am tired of people that are making a mockery of my God. That are saying my God is not working. He is working. We are the ones who are not working the principles. God honors a man who lives by principle, Lizzie. Lizzie. We want change, but we don't want to stop. We don't want to stop fornicating. We want to still fornicate. We want to still do everything else at the same time. And then we call servants of God. We say the servants of God are false. That they're not teaching the right gospel. How bad do you love your God? How bad do you want to live by principles? It doesn't matter how much, God bless you, Grace. It doesn't matter how much I can pray and I can preach, I can prophesy. If you're not going to work this thing, you're just exhausting me. I'm going to burn out one day and maybe, God forbid, I burn out. I come against it in Jesus' name and wonder why is their lives not changing. Can do whether you know that in the back scenes you are just still doing the same thing you were doing the last years. Why can't you just take time out and just give God a chance to work you, to work on you? Look to your God as a source of help and say, God, now I'm eradicating every other thing. I'm looking at you as my source of help. Jesus. Father, I ask for your grace this morning. Ask, ask for your grace for your people this morning. I ask, Lord, that they have the faith, my God, to face every single trial, every single temptation that they will come uh, into or they will come against or they will come across. May the Lord give you faith to fight every single trial. May the Lord grant you grace to stand strong despite every confrontation that you will have in your life in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord meet you at the point of your needs. If he's going to meet you at the point of your need, make sure that your principles are aligned. Somebody shout, no more setbacks. 
No more setbacks. I'm coming out. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, fear not, be, neither be ye dismayed. God has your best interest at heart. Do you have your best interest at heart? Are you, gonna, are you ready to act out your best interest? My God. God has a plan for your heart, for your life, Sne. God has a plan. Stop cooking up your own plans. If you're going to cook up your own plan, check whether it's aligned to God. He's got the best plan for your life. His plan doesn't change. Even though your experience and your struggles that are coming and you are having setbacks, you might have struggles and you might have hiccups along the road, you might have setbacks, but his plan has not changed for your life. My God. His patience, his mercy, his love for you is so overwhelming. God bless those who are giving. And this morning, he's giving you another opportunity to do his will. He's giving you another opportunity to say, repent and remove all the hindrances from your life. Repent and remove all the hindrances from your life so that you can do right. My God. I didn't sign up for no change. I signed up to see lives changed. I just wish you could you could want it as bad as I want it for you. I wish you could want it as bad as God wants it for you. Some of you, you know the cause of your failures. The same way that Joshua knew the, when he found out the cause of his failure. He thoroughly dealt with it. You know what is your issue. Just deal with it. Why are you getting stuck in the same thing? You know what is the cause of your failure, but you keep on going back to that failure. My God, you are not a dog that goes back to its vomit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Fear and discouragement are instruments of Satan, and I, I, I come against every spirit of fear, every spirit of discouragement in your life. Those of you who have been panicking, and, and, and you come to this platform, that we deal with the things that are making you want to crumble and fall down. You came, yes, so that you can get a financial breakthrough. I know. But what principles are you going to apply after the broadcast? What are you going to do about it? There's a point of the word. There's a point where the Holy Spirit does its work. But there's a point where you're doing the work. Come on, somebody. I will strengthen you, says the Lord. I will help you, says the Lord. I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. Come on, somebody. Don't entertain fear. Why do you want to entertain fear? Why can't we de develop the audacity that when we have prayed a prayer of, 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 of healing, that we are, we are guaranteed we are just going to stand our ground and know that God is going to heal us? Come on, somebody. God gave uh, Joshua the assurance in Joshua chapter 8. He says, I have already given into your hand the enemy, the people, the city of the land. So he has already given you the enemy. He's even given you the victory. Then you should charge forth with excitement and, 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 and that zealousness and to know that this thing, I've got it. God reminds you of the past victories that he has done for you and for others. Hallelujah. He said, he commanded him to do so in I, as he, as he had done to Jericho. He had to remind him and say, the same way you conquered Jericho is the same, uh, same way you're going to conquer the people of I. Hallelujah. It's time to rise up. Tell your neighbor, it's time to rise up. Come on, somebody. It's time to rise up out of discouragement. It's time to realize that we don't need to wait any longer for victory to come into your life. It's time to rise up. Talk to me, somebody. Your victory is dependent on, on your cooperation with God. Your victory is dependent on your cooperation with the word of God. 
You need to turn your attention immediately from defeat and uh, of the past uh, and, and to the victory of the present. You need to understand that you cannot be focusing more on defeat and be expecting victory because the more you focus on defeat, you will not see the victory that the Lord has set in front of you. Come on, somebody. God has already told you what is yours. It's time to rise up. It's time to focus on the victory that is ahead. It's time to forget the past failures. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Joshua in, in chapter 8 in verse 3 he had to choose what is going to who he was going to go with to conquer on the battlefield come on somebody the Bible says that he chose 30,000 men mighty men of valor are you amongst the 30,000 mighty men of valor is God gonna choose you this morning even though God had promised victory, he realized that he must thoroughly prepare and do all that he knew to do. Then God would do the rest. And this exactly confirms my point to say, even though God can give you the word and tell you that your time for promotion and, and your season of breakthrough has come, there is still a moment of preparation that you're going to have to do. You're not just going to walk in into that interview and expect that you're just going to, you're going to have to prepare for the interview. Even though God has told you and confirmed that the job is yours, you're going to have to have sensible answers that you're giving to the panel. Talk to me, somebody. You're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to study and know exactly what they're talking about. You're going to have to know about their company. You're going to have to do something. You're not going to say, Pastor Fortune said, I've got the job, so I'm just going to walk in and just sit there and smile at them. You're going to have to do something. Joshua had to prepare. Hallelujah. The reason why some believers fail is due to the fact that they never prepare for victory. I want you to tell your neighbor, I will prepare. I will be prepared. Are you prepared for victory? Victory needs preparation. People will say, if God wants me to win, he will make it happen. No, it doesn't work like that. If God wants, you, wants me to win, he will make it happen. That is not God's way. He expects us to prepare. Another reason other people fail is because they never choose to be conquerors. You have to make up a choice and say, I am more than a conqueror. I'm going to be a conqueror. You have to choose to be a conqueror. Instead, you find people that accept the enemy's agents as part of their daily lives. They say, oh, well, life is life. Things are rough and, and we, we've just got to mix in the, in, in the whole thing. And then you wonder why you, you live in defeat. It's because you've allowed the enemy, you've, you've set in the counsel of the ungodly while the principle said very clearly in Psalm 1, 1, he says, do not sit in the counsel of the ungodly. Do not find yourself amongst the enemy's agents who are sitting around and you are thinking that thing is not going to affect you. It's going to affect you. It's going to rub off on you. You're going to start behaving like them. Misery lives. But what is the saying, the proverb that says, Misery lives company. You're going to also start behaving like them. There's no way your husband can just be gallivanting with people who are busy committing adultery up and up. The thing doesn't rub off on you. At some point, he starts thinking the thing is good. There's nothing. There's no harm. He, now he cannot even rebuke his own friends. My God. Choose victory. Choose to be a conqueror. Don't accept the enemy's agents in your life as if it's normal. Hebrews 12 to 1 says, Where, Wherefore, seeing we are also encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight that the, of sin that so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Lay aside any sinful thing. Do not touch it. Do not fidget with it. Do not go to and knock on it. When somebody knocks on your door at 1 a.m., what are they coming to do, single lady? Did you think they're coming for Bible study? And then you're going to say, I fell, Pastor. You, you didn't fall. You opened the door for the enemy. You did not lay aside the sin that so easily besets you. You did not fall. You knew what was coming. Run, resist the devil, and flee. If you're not going to say amen, say ouch. It's okay if you leave. But I pray you stay and become part of the family and follow me still. I'm more than a conqueror. I've been around the block for quite a while. 
even my daughter knows that she cannot send me a request for for finances in school and you you can't ask me for photocopy money when i know how the system works thank god somebody say i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back i love you either way whether i'm hurting you this morning i'm just following what the spirit of word of the lord is saying we must put off all excess baggage take it off take off a negative thinking all that negative talk that you're talking about all the time negative thinking you're always finding yourself in the camps of people who are always talking negatively if you are at your workplace and you're always talking bad about the supervisor the manager the ceo you're gonna eventually start talking negatively why are you hanging around everybody who's talking about how your boss is horrible how the work is horrible but it's the same job that is giving you a salary at the end of the month you're gonna start behaving like them tomorrow you are surprised when things are turned around and they say it is it is gift that was saying it i did not say anything and meanwhile you were just sitting there chilled but you the fact that you associated with the negative talk negative thinking always thinking the worst it's a job. It's paying you. Yes, it might not be paying you what you want, but stop talking so negatively around it. God blesses you in the little so that there can be much. There is a transition. It's a principle, God's people. Come on, somebody. Put off the excess baggage of the negative talk, the negative thinking. Refuse to give way to fear. I fear. Oh, I'm afraid. I don't know whether I'm going to make it. Yo, I'm afraid. I, am I going to make it? I'm afraid. We, we just loosely in speech like this. Forgetting that our words carry power. Lay aside unbelief. Unbelief. You don't believe. I don't know. I don't know. I'll see. I don't know. Have the confidence to conquer. And you go forth in every single battle that comes your way. I will conquer in Jesus' mighty name. Choose conquerors. What are the conquerors that you are choosing to, to implement in your life? I choose to have faith. Hallelujah. I choose to have love. I choose to have forgiveness. I choose to have mercy on people. Therefore, mercy shall also be apportioned to me. I choose to have joy and to apply joy daily in my life. I choose to have patience. I choose to have a prayerful life and to actually be responsible to wake up every 5 a.m. As cold as it was, I still drag myself here and I said I'm going to pray. At 10 o'clock, I'm still going to meditate on the word of God. And before I sleep, I'm still going to pray for myself and I'm going to pray for my children. I choose to apply a conqueror that is wisdom. I want the wisdom of God to operate that tells me to move away from nonsense. The wisdom of God that I will apply when I'm looking at a contract and I can see this is entrapment and I'm going to move away from that nonsense and I'm not going to sign any contracts that is going to make me uh, lead me astray. Come on, somebody. My God. Joshua did not only have a plan of victory, but he had a plan. He had a timetable, exactly how he was going to do it, where he was going to war, where he was going to attack. Come on, somebody. We are called to bring the good news of the gospel to, uh, to the captives. Hallelujah of Satan. We need to be strategic in how we are going to do it. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus, let's pray. I think time is fast spent. We'll come back to this one day again. Somebody say no more setback. Make sure you follow the account that you are seeing me on. Put on your notification bell. I'm here 5 a.m. every single day of the week. 5 a.m. South African Standard Time. Make sure you are following me on YouTube if you want to watch the replay. The, the YouTube handle is underneath my name. If you're on TikTok, it's there. Fortune L online. My moderators will put it up as well. If you want to follow Mara Official, my videos are also posted on his uh, video timeline as well. Those of you who are on Mara Official, if you want to follow me directly, Fortune L online, you find me and I will help. I will help put up my name also there and pin it there. So don't shift. My Father, I thank you for these ones that have shown up this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I give you all the glory, honor, and the adoration. We will not be our own enemies in Jesus' mighty name. We will not be our own enemies in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you on Mara Official, oh, okay, so I, I, I'm actually on a different account. I thought I was on that account that you'll follow. Father, we ask you for mercy. Father, we come to you with a repentant heart. 
we ask oh god that you turn around what the enemy meant for evil turn it around for our good Father, we ask that you restore the years that the canker worms, the locust, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has stolen from us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare and we decree that we shall eat plenty and we shall be satisfied and we shall lack no good thing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. God bless you. Father, I ask that you bless every person that is gifted, everybody that has joined the subscription, everybody that is partnering with this ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that you will deal wondrously with them in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that every single person that is at the sound of my voice, they shall never be ashamed as you continue to deal wondrously with them. Those that choose to follow your principles in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, that every single person who's at the influence and the sound of my voice, those on Facebook, YouTube, and on TikTok, my God, that they will know that you are in the midst of them and that they will always know that you are the Lord, their God. God bless you, Mama. That you alone are Lord God and there is no other God. There is no other substitute. There is no other makeshift in Jesus' mighty name. Father, although a lot of people may be going through a lot of things, they may be going through a lot of setbacks that have made them to come to a standstill. Father, we decree and we declare that in our lives concerning us, oh God, whatever setback that we have experienced, my God, and we have felt that there was no way out. Father, we are thanking you that we are coming back from it. Right now, it's our moment of a comeback in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, that you have provided us an opportunity for a step up. Come on, somebody. This is a step up for you in Jesus' mighty name. I've pinned my account. Those of you on Mara Official, you can follow that account, Fortunel Online. That's the same account on YouTube as well. Father, no longer shall we be managing as if there is no end in sight. Today, Father God, we decree and we declare that there shall be no more stagnation and no more setback in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, I'm stepping up. Come on, I want you to declare that you are stepping up. You are stepping up in Jesus' mighty name. You are stepping up. You are stepping up in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, Charlene. You are stepping up. No more setback. The truth has set you free. You are stepping up, Jeneca, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we will no longer be in a, in a condition that is marked by a lack of flow. And our lives will flow. There shall be movement. There shall be development. We are moving, Father God. We are moving mountains. We are moving. We are shifting levels. We are shifting countries in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, anything that has been stopping our progress in our lives or in our families, my God, we are rooted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, Lord I speak to the person who's at the sound of my voice right now. I say that no longer will they be standing still in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever has been preventing them from moving forward, whatever has been preventing them from overtaking, I uproot them in Jesus', in Jesus mighty name. Father, I remove every single form and trace of stagnation. I decree and I declare promotion shall come in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare no longer will there be any dullness in their business. Their businesses shall not be dull, but their businesses shall shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up in Jesus' mighty name. I'm stepping up. That setback was for a set. It's, it's a setup for a, a step up. It's a shift up in Jesus' mighty name. You are shifting up in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we are going to experiences, experience that there's going to be movement in our finances as we change and we keep to your principles in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I ex we are going to experience that there shall no longer be any dryness in, the, in our spirituality in Jesus' mighty name. Any form of setback, my God.
that has been slowing down the progress of your people, my God. The, the setbacks that have been making them go backwards instead of forwards, oh God. I come against it right now, my God. I scatter it by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' mighty name. Any reversal of progress, my God that has happened over time, that has been threatening to overwhelm them. Right now, Father God, we reverse it in Jesus' mighty name. No longer will they work and their work crumbles in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I speak to that person that has suffered a setback of a loss of job, that person who has suffered a setback of a destruction on their business, my God, and a lot more, and whatever it may be, God, whatever the setback that they have gone through, Father God, thank you, Lord, that you have given them a renewed hope and a renewed confidence, Lord, that they are stepping up in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever setback that has been brought back, my God, by the hands of the devil or his agents, my God, who, whatever agents that the devil has deployed for that stagnation and that setback, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I arrest it, I bind it in Jesus' mighty name. I bind every single agent. Father God, I say they shall be obliterated by the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. They shall no longer be bound, my God but they are released by God to be significant and they will make a mark on this earth in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that they will not be stagnant, that the children of Israel, they will no longer be going around their Egypt, they will no longer be going around the same mountain, my God, 430 years, that is not their portion in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, as they cry out to you this morning, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are sending timely help and rescue them in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody saying, I'm receiving the help of God. I shall Shall not go around this mountain any longer. I am coming out of this Egypt right now in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. My God, my God. That person that has been clinging to a, 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 a person that has been inflicting pain, that person who has been inflicting hardship right now, Father God, I uproot them and I, I dissolve that relationship that is ungodly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No longer shall they be stagnant. No longer shall they suffer setback. No longer shall there be a setback for their children in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for bringing unity in families. Lord, that the structure of the family shall be rebuilt. Marriages shall be restored restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for giving the resources and the strength to single parents in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that will bring about and raise children who are godly and raise children. Father God, give them the provision, the maintenance, and everything that they need to raise their children. Father God, help them in, uh, help, send them help, my God, from every form of destiny. Help, I pray for scholarships, bursaries, anything, my God, that will help lighten the burden in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I declare and I decree we are prospering, we are moving forward, we are stepping up, my God. We are being set up for a comeback. My God, let the comeback of that single parent be bigger than what they even expected of themselves in Jesus' mighty name. I encourage them, my God, to never give up. You must refuse to give up in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up six more minutes than I round up. Say, I refuse to give up in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be rooted and you shall be grounded. You will stop lamenting of your situation. Whatever challenge that you are facing, whether it is in the workplace, whether it is in the family environment, whether it is from your relative side, whether it is from your father's house or your mother's house, right now, I am guaranteeing you and I'm saying that God will surely answer you and God will surely answer for you in Jesus' mighty name. Your situation is not your stagnation and your permanent destination in Jesus' mighty name. Your situation has come to pass. This is your shift moment in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, declare it. I refuse to give up. You will continue to seek to know what is the truth in the word of God. You will continue to seek to know what is the logos that needs to become the rhema in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Kurama God is committed to answering you. Whenever you seek him with your whole heart, he says, I will be there. I'm going to deal with it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Whatever instruction that the Lord is going to give you, deal with it and do whatever is required in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are ready to fast. We are ready to pray. We are ready to break through in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I pray and as I close, I come against every form of stagnation and setback in Jesus' mighty name by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I disengage every single person that is at the sound of my voice right now from all appearances of stagnation, all appearances of setbacks in their life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I decree that an end has come to every setback in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any setback goal that has been set against them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by the forces of darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, it has come to an end in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Every plan and purpose of hell that has been arraigned against your destiny shall not prevail. I say every plan of the hell, every plan or purpose of hell shall not prevail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I call forth the fire of God, you consuming fire, you God who answers by fire. I call you forth, I call the, forth, the fire from above heaven right now to consume every spirit of stagnation, every spirit of a setback right now, consume it Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything that is standing at the door of your progress is being consumed by the fire from above in Jesus' mighty name right now. Come on, somebody. Every power of darkness that has been causing marital stagnation in your life, every power of darkness that has been causing stagnation in your destiny, I command it to be destroyed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak to every foundational error that is bringing setbacks in our families right now. Right now, whatever foundational error that is speaking against our progress in our life in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree an end to them by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. It's coming to an end right now. Whatever it is coming from, wherever it is coming from, whatever it is coming from, wherever it is coming from right now, if that foundational error is coming to an end in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I speak to every curse. I speak to every spell. I speak to every enchantment that has been released into the lives of those who are at the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know what is the spell, what is the curse, what is the enchantment that has been speaking against your destiny, that has been causing you stagnation, that has been causing you a setback in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command it to be averted by the blood of Jesus Christ right now in Jesus' mighty name. Back to sender, I send it. My God. Ah, By the blood of the eternal covenant, you are released from every curse. You are released from every curse that is coming from the roots of your father's house. You are released from every curse that is coming from the roots of your mother's house. Any curse that has been causing stagnation, you are released from that curse in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every root of uh, every curse in Jesus' mighty name that has been causing you setbacks in any area of your life, I command you to be loose from it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, let every stagnation, let every setback have roots from wherever it's coming from father god whether it is from your mother's house your father's house or your marital uh, spousal's house in jesus mighty name whatever it is as long as it has been speaking against your destiny against your life right now i nail it to the cross of calvary right now i nail it to the cross of calvary jesus died for you and jesus redeemed you from that curse the curse is broken in jesus mighty name you are set free you are set free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Karabashoto kodia hasata. Rakali amasoto kodia bahasata. Leki arabasonda dia masonda ki arabaha. I speak to every ancestral curse of stagnation. I command it to go right now. I speak to every ancestral curse of stagnation, every covenant of setback that has been carried out in your family, that is speaking against your life, that is speaking against the life of your family. I command it to be broken by the power of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is broken in Jesus' mighty name. Father, by your power, break every bondage of stagnation, break every bondage of setbacks. In Jesus' mighty name, your children will not be bound by any power that is going to set them back. Your children will not be in the same stagnation position. In Jesus' mighty name, right now, I decree and I declare that they are moving forward by the blood of Jesus Christ. They are moving forward. Their destiny shall not be carried 
engaged in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command that any hand of, of, of that is trying to exchange their destiny right now, it is catching fire by Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we receive the anointing that will break every yoke of stagnation right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every yoke of stagnation, it is broken right now by the anointing. Every yoke that has been saying that there shall be a setback, it is broken in Jesus' mighty name. You will go forward in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare, Kolila, you will break, go, go forward in Jesus' mighty name. Suzette, you will go forward. Jeneka, you will go forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. King Milia, you will go forward. Steph, you will go forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mara official, we've lost the feet. Somebody please fix that for me. Makoraba shoto kolia masa nadia basa. I command every sea, that every red sea that is standing as an instrument of stagnation or setback for you to come apart. Right now, you are going through the red sea experience in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you on Mara Official, you can quickly jump onto Fortunel online because I, I can see your screen is frozen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the red sea shall part for you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, I'm going forward. You are going forward. You are charging forward. The Egyptians that are chasing you will not catch up. You are going forward. You will not be consumed. You will not be overwhelmed. You will not be flooded in this. In Jesus' mighty name, you are going forward. You are stepping through. You are going through in Jesus' mighty name. Your people shall go forward in Jesus' mighty name. Your family shall go forward in Jesus' mighty name. Your business shall go forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, I speak to every force of wickedness that is speaking stagnation in your marital life in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to be consumed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any wickedness, any strange woman that is trying to break up your marriage right now, may they be consumed in the name of Jesus Christ. They be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' mighty name. There shall no longer be stagnation in your marital life. I command marital settlement to reach every single person. And that is here that God will direct you to the right person. My God, in Jesus' mighty name, that will not bring stagnation in your life. I command every narcissistic person that is in your life to come out in Jesus mighty name my God thank you Jesus as you shout that amen well I need you to agree with me that every agent of the devil that has been bringing stagnancy in your finances every agent of the devil that has been frustrating your life right now they're going to be struck by the power of the Holy Spirit every agenda of the wicked that has been bringing stagnation and setback in your business right now I command need to fall down and die in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, there shall be no longer any stagnation in your business. I command that setback to be a comeback. That is that setback to be a step up. Let there be more prophets, more customers that are coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the agents' de de devices have been, whatever every agent of the devil that has been sent to stagnate you in your career right now, receive the wrath of God. I don't know who has been fighting for your position. I don't know who has been saying that you will not be promoted, but right now I'm in your career and I command every form of stagnation to catch fire. Let the wrath of God deal with any agent of Satan that is saying that your career will not progress, that is saying your career will not start in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I come against every chain of stagnation. Lord, anybody who has been chained, my God, whether you are chained through evil manipulation, whether it, it was also be because of your own self-sabotage, my God, I release you from those chains. Those chains are breaking right now in Jesus' mighty name. Whoever is holding your promotion in your workplace, let them be haunted in the name of Jesus Christ until your promotion is released to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, every strong man, my God, my my God, we speak to every strong, strong man that has been speaking of in any stagnation of setback in our families. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, we declare and we decree there shall be no longer stagnation and setback. That strong man is removed. We command them to move by the power of the living God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up. Oh, my God. Have I exceeded the time? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every stagnation, every setback against your marital destiny, it is removed in Jesus' mighty name. You are settled maritally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any man or any woman, whether they're coming from your father's compound or your or, or, or mother's com compound, right now, anybody who has said that they, you will not progress, Father God, let them die in the grave that they dug for you in Jesus' mighty name. They will go down in that grave that they dug up for you in Jesus' name. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dr. Catherine. Thank you for everybody who has given in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God. Anything that has been fighting and saying you will be stagnant, anything that has been saying you will not, you will suffer setbacks, or that it's for your family, setbacks against your children, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command it to scatter, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, every spirit of San Balad and Tobias in our lives, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let them be silenced by the mighty power of Jesus Christ, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, Father, we will not associate with them in Jesus' mighty name. We are moving forward. We are moving forward. We declare that stagnation and setback shall not prevail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We detach ourselves from every agenda of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, give us a spirit of discernment. God bless you, Jenica. We, we give us the spirit of discernment, oh God. Help us to know those who are sent by the devil to draw us back in life that we should not associate with them. My God, somebody to say I receive the spirit of discernment in Jesus mighty name father God let the fire consume all those who are perpetrating stagnation and setbacks in our life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree an end father as I close in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare an end has come to stagnation an end has come to setbacks in the name of Jesus Christ against ourselves and our families our businesses and everybody oh God that we are standing in agreement for in and in the gap for in Jesus mighty name father Father, thank you for I know that all forms of stagnation and setbacks have been removed and they are destroyed from now on we rise in joy and we rise and we are moving forward we are stepping up we are shifting up in Jesus mighty name I give you all the praise and honor and glory and adoration my God I say all glory belongs to you every testimony that will come from every single person that has been on this broadcast father God I give all the glory to you in Jesus mighty name I thank you Lord as using me as a vessel my God today Lord I pray God that every single word that came out of my mouth Lord that it is exactly the way you wanted it to come out and Father God it will cause a change and a transformation it will motivate and inspire somebody and somebody will be transformed as a result and Father God that they are returning with the testimony as a result in Jesus mighty name may you be glorified may king that may the kingdom of God be popular and, 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 and populated and may the kingdom of hell be depopulated as a result in Jesus mighty name and the saints of God shouted a resounding amen and an amen and an amen amen somebody god bless you i want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in on facebook and on youtube those of you who are on um dr mara's page who are also on my page on facebook i love you so much god bless you thank you so much for keeping and being faithful and showing up thank you for everybody who tuned in on the youtube and everybody who's gonna watch the replay i pray that it is a blessing as well to you when you watch it as a replay and that you keep on coming to the youtube channel keep watching and keep liking the videos it helps there's also a thank you button if you want to appreciate and you want to just give an offering thank you for the partners for, for those who are giving those who are subscribers those who are gifted those who have gifted on tiktok you guys are amazing as always god bless you everybody everybody who has followed us also uh please just click on the follow button and click on the notification bell every single one of you matters we love you genuinely and we are praying for you genuinely everybody that has joined my team right there next to my name if you want to know my handle it's fortune L online you just click on my uh, profile picture there pastor fortune fortune L online across all social media um channels you want to send me a praise report or a prayer request you can uh, just drop it on the instagram or on facebook messenger or on the inbox on tiktok god bless you i love you guys so much have an awesome day remember you're awesome and keep winning
，拜拜。